Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be putting out my little reply video for if you guys wanted to see me make a power hammer. Thanks for watching. Okay everyone, here we are at our, my workbench. Um, first off, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to everyone who's given me feedback on this uh, new little series I'm trying to release. Um, I'm a little bit tired today, had a long day of it, a um, whole lot of stuff going on in my mind and things, um, but that's not what this video is about. The video today is to take and give a response video and kind of give some clarity to what type of power hammer I'm talking about. So the power hammer that I'm going to be designing and building is going to be all done in a 10 part series. And this is a new style power hammer in comparison to what my other Da Vinci cam hammer was. And mainly because I don't like repeating designs. Um, it bores me and it just doesn't excite me. So, plus I've taken what I've learned from that design and going to make a different style hammer with a few little more things that will make it better. So the style hammer that I'm going to be making is a beam style hammer or a held hammer. And I hope this will hope this will still excite you guys out there. I'm not ready to do an air hammer yet in, in uh, build and stuff like that and I do not believe that it's obtainable by most smiths. Only guys that are going to be able to take and have the fabrication experience that is needed for making such hammers. So, what type of hammer are we building? Well, we are going to be building this new style hammer that I am designing right now in front of your very eyes. And I hope this makes somewhat sense. If it doesn't, I apologize. It will in the videos and when I have the cut list. But essentially, it will have a lot of the same framework as the uh, revisited design Da Vinci Cam Hammer. It'll have a lot of the same framework and stuff, but with a few added key features. So that is the ideal that I'm trying to take and project here to you. One of the key features that it's going to have is the other one had pipe for my bearings. This one's actually going to have pillow block bearings on all surfaces that rotate, except for the foot treadle itself. The other thing is this framework will be a little more skeletonized, and what that means is there'll be less wood and less little fidgety pieces to deal with. This also helps me keep it within a 10-step program, which I would like it to do. It will feature my cam design, my original, well, you know, my cam design I came up with for the revisited design, so that will translate, and so for anybody that's having problems with that, that will translate. It'll have an adjustable linkage, so this way you can adjust the height for the material that you are working. Um, and then the spring is also a little bit different. I can't draw all this in. I, you know, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. It's essentially going to be like a single leaf, leaf spring that will come in and attach everything together. And since there is a lot of confusion about the motor that I was using and things like that, I am going to be using a one horsepower motor to drive everything with a variable speed switch up here on the actual ample block itself. So this way you can turn the motor on and off at your convenience and leisure. So essentially this is a, about as basic a style of hammer as you can build. Later on in this series, if I continue this series and it becomes what and it is, you know, it works out well enough, there's enough interest and things like that, I will be designing and building other power hammers, like guided helv hammers and also not only guided help hammers, but yes, air hammers and hammers of all sorts. 
you know, hammers kind of like tire hammers and things like that. Um, with respect to Clay Spencer's design and Ray Klontz's design, it would be a, a design similar, but mainly kind of just some of my own techniques and things that I've picked up along the way. Um, yeah, so pretty much this is what type of hammer we are going to build in this series, in this first 10 part series. The cost of this hammer, oh, and I want to mention, this is all, this is going to be a wooden hammer, okay? It is going to be wooden. So that way, a lot of this will be more obtainable for most people. It will hit harder than the revisited design Da Vinci cam hammer based upon the fact that this from here to here will actually be a much longer stroke. And this will be a little closer to the fulcrum, giving it a lot more hitting energy. Like a hand hammer swung from the correct end of the hammer. Um, what's some of the other features I wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah. So the list itself is going to be a materials list. So it will have all the sizes that I won't be going over in the videos. It's going to have, you know, the lengths of everything, where you drill your holes at and everything. Now I'm going to be going over, you know, drilling the holes, but I'm not going to go over the overall sizes and dimensions and do all that all over again, as that will already be in the document for the 399. Um, I will be available for questions when I start this whole project and the overwhelming consensus is yes um, and I greatly appreciate all the comments that have been uh, put out there and uh, I really appreciate that and I hope everybody you know is getting as excited about this as I am I really think this will help a lot of guys out and that's really what makes me really excited about this and now it's just a matter of me finding the time to do it and to make it lucrative enough for myself that I can continue this into the future and, you know, help as many smiths out as I can with designing and building these things. One thing that I like to keep in mind, uh, like I like to tell people, is a power hammer is a tool. And it, you design a tool for your purposes. So if you need to take and forge three inch material, this isn't gonna be your hammer. You need to put the big boy pants on and buy a correct and powerful manufactured hammer and spend your eight to $15,000. You just can't ask that out of something that is like this. Uh, it's just not obtainable by most guys. This here, I'm rating it for about one inch material, one inch thick material. That seems to be most people's hurdles to overcome. Uh, if you're needing a much heavier hitting hammer than that, then you will have to balloon up the sizes of this and that's gonna increase the cost. Right now, the estimated cost for this, for somebody to buy everything and get everything put together, will be right around that $300 US range. Um, and most of that is just brand new construction grade lumber plus, you know, the electric motor and pulleys and some of the some of the other parts that you have to buy that you just can't manufacture yourself. But that's the way it works. You have to put your money where your hobby is. If you really want to take and do the blacksmithing as a hobby, if you can afford a Netflix subscription, or if you can take and afford paying that big giant cable bill every month or that big old 62 inch plasma screen TV in your house, you can afford to build, your, build yourself a hammer. And that's kind of my way of looking at it. So I'm trying to take and make this as cheap as possible so it's obtainable as possible for folks. And if you can find anywhere else where you can pick up a hammer, a self-made hammer, or build one yourself for under $300, well, more power to you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I've got a lot on the go in the shop. I've got a lot of big things. The deadline, what I'm thinking about doing this, will be sometime in September, as that is looking to be my closest date that I'll be able to shoot this video 
and this video series and be able to build this hammer. Uh, sorry for the weight on that, but you know, it's 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 better than never at all, I guess. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Um, you know, I love hearing the feedback, and yeah, we'll go from there, guys. I'm really excited about this. I really want to take and get on this. And oh, and before I go, let me make one last statement. I will be doing a walkthrough of my methodology. So some of my thought processes of how I build the power hammer, I feel will be more, or the reason why I chose to start with a certain end of a project will be more of value to guys than, you know, just the hammer in of itself. The method that I choose to do a lot of stuff, I call it the Ross method, and it was taught to me by, well, Peter Ross, and I'm going to call it the Ross method because it's where I kind of got an epiphany from this guy on how you start with one piece, and you build off that piece, and you keep going until you get the full picture. It's kind of like a puzzle. Building any power hammer is like a puzzle. There's multiple, multiple, multiple pieces. A lot of guys make the mistake, and I know there's some of you math wizards out there and over-engineers and things of that nature. You make the mistake of getting the big picture, the big grand ideal, and then you never cut your first piece of lumber or you never weld your first joint. You don't have to know what X, Y, and Z is doing in a project to know what you're doing for A, B, and C. You get those done first, and then you move through the alphabet. So anyways, enough of me rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, it doesn't matter. But I greatly appreciate all the positivity and the support from my loyal subscribership. You guys are awesome, and I look forward to making this for you guys. So let me know. What you think of this video in the comment section? We'll talk to you later. Have a great day.